Did I ever tell you why I came to Saudi Arabia? No. I'm an ophthalmologist, and um, the you know financially, the opportunities in America were much better than the opportunities overseas. I just came upon an advertisement looking for an ophthalmologist here in the Middle East by the group that I did join, which is called Maghrebi. I had interviewed for the position, and I was considering that uh, compared with the other opportunities I had in the States, which were much more lucrative. And it was not an easy decision at the time. And, and I was thinking about it back and forth with, with, you know, talking with my wife, considering the, you know, the advantages of coming to a Muslim country versus the advantages of staying in America and making more money and so on and so forth. Well, right about that time, there was um, a couple in our area. They, had, they were both doctors and both wildly successful. They were work, working in private practice and they drove new Mercedes Benzes every year I mean, they had all the trappings of high financial success in the West. And right about their t that time, their daughter turned 18, the age of majority in the States. Mm. And the moment she turned 18, she went to her parents and said, I want to live my life. Mm. She took off her hijab. She said, I want a boyfriend. I want an apartment. I want to live as I want to live. I'm out of here. And she did it. She left the home. She took off her hijab. She started living in the Western style. She started living in Zina with a boyfriend in an apartment, going clubbing, going drinking, and, and so on and so forth. The best part of that was that she was drinking alcohol and dancing, you know, the, and living in Zina. The, the worst part of it was that she left the religion. And her mother was just you know, psychologically destroyed, and she, uh, she couldn't work. She uh, basically collapsed in her, in her home, and just, she just stayed at home crying, 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 and just saying over and over again, I would give everything for my daughter. I'd give everything to have my daughter back. And it was their only child. Mm -hmm. And my wife and my our reactions, and then we looked at our situation. We had one daughter who was one year old. And we just said, you know what, that just that makes our decision a whole lot easier. So that's, that's why I accepted the position here in the Middle East. Mm. And the rewards of living in Saudi Arabia and in Medina in specific just are difficult to count. Mm. It, you, you, you realize how unimportant money really is. When you look back, just the, the blessings of living in Saudi Arabia and Medina in particular far outweighed uh, any financial benefit, any additional financial benefit I think I could have earned for myself in the West. You know, it's an amazing thing to see how tight the families are in the Middle East. You know, they, they take care of one another and they nurture one another. Whereas in the West, yeah. you know, if you, if you take the oldest <coughs> boy or girl in the family and mm -hmm. say, you know, help raise your brother or sister, they see that as an imposition. They see that as, you know, a problem, a weight upon them, a restraint upon their happiness, mm -hmm. you know, whereas here it's normal and they enjoy it. And you see them yeah. nurturing one another and playing with one another. ومن يهاجر في سبيل الله يجد في الأرض مراغما كثيرا وسعه ومن يخرج من بيته مهاجرا إلى الله ورسوله ثم يدركه الموت فقد وقع أجره على الله وكان الله غفورا رحيما